Yes, I'm the guy that cycled around Australia just under just under 16,000 kilometers to do a loop and I did it on a fixed gear bike. I did it in two parts. I did the Indian Pacific wheel race and then kept riding. Um, it was about 9,000 kilometers. I did 5,500 kilometers for the Indian Pacific wheel race and I just kept heading north to Cairns. Went home for a bit. I think it was two months and then came back, smashed out the last 7,000 kilometers in a month from Cairns to Perth, across the top of Australia. This is a setup I had for the last, for the Cairns to Perth across the top, the last 7,000. I'm gonna start with the front. So, got these spin on these wheels. Uh, I think up to 30 millimeters wide, super wide. 20 spokes on the front, 24 spokes on the back. Still true, even though I've, I've done over 10,000 miles of these wheels. Um, really, really cool stuff. Quick release, this isn't the quick release I use. I use like a little Allen key track legal quick release. I think they're like some Shimano. Shimano, let's see if we can find out from the back. Yeah, Shimano. Uh, don't know exactly which ones. I didn't go for the cheapest, didn't go for the most expensive. I went for long reach. Uh, I went for long reach because I had a few different gear changes and stuff and I'd, I wanted to have the um, the space for the the wheel to move back and forth and have make sure I'd still be able to use the brakes because I ran a back brake. But we'll, we'll get to the back. A lot of people want to do an ultra endurance, they just stick on the TT bars onto drop bars, but um, I usually ride wide bars when I'm riding fixed gear, and I thought I want to have the biggest, biggest change in in uh, in feel. So I wanted super wide, comfy, upright for going up and down the hills, and I wanted aerodynamic for going on the flats, and yeah, it actually worked out really, really well. Evan cycles like um, what would you call these? Ergonomic grips. I did the first first 9,000 k of our ergonomic grips. So I just had double wrap bar tape, and uh, yeah, my uh, wrist got real real painful here. A lot had numbness in my fingers, all sorts. These helped a lot. Way more spongy and just bigger area for your hand to rest on. So that was all good. Oh man, I could do a whole video on all the tires I use. At the moment, I've got a Maxxis Refuse in 28 mil, and on the back, I've got a. Uh, all those ones, Schwabi, um, Durano Plus in 28 as well. Nice little reflective detail, stay safe. Yeah, I use a whole other range of tires. I guess I'll go through um, go through that in another video. But yeah, tubes, running tubes. Uh, I rode tubes at first, but we'll, we'll, we'll start with we'll another video. That brings us to another spare tire here, Maxxis Refuse. That was on there for the whole trip, didn't come off. It was just zip tied, zip tied onto the TT bars. Profile T plus, T plus 4 TT bars, aluminium, both both my bars are aluminium. Don't want to be screwing around with carbon. Australia is so flat anyway. Uh, i got some uh, grips here, just a little sp slightly spongy, just to give you a little bit more comfort. Got a bulk cage here, this is just a cheapo one I got from a um, store in cans, just to get a little bit more high vis going on. And um, the one I had before was a bit lightweight and the bottles kept coming out. Held on there with a profile, uh, Profile TT bottle cage bars, whatever. And um, we got the exposure race light and the mount on there, pretty nice, works out pretty nicely. Super good light. The um, battery life on it is like 36 hours on the minimum setting, which was more than enough most of the time. Uh, occasionally turned it up a little bit more, but usually lasted forever. Lasted for a few days, a few nights. Thompson stem, nice high quality stem. Um, Nothing, nothing went wrong there. Titanium top cap, because I thought I might as well have some titanium. Garvin spacers. I never actually moved the stem up from there. Jeez, I probably should have said the frame. It's a Dolan uh, FXE. It has track dropouts, but it also has back brake mount and bottle cage mounts. And uh, in there somewhere it has the yeah little mounts for putting a back brake cable on. Um, carbon forks. Dolan forks as well, um, yeah, awesome. Three more bottle cages. These two carbon, cheap, fake Chinese ones. A um, little bit annoying getting the bottle out of here, but storage, isn't it? During Indian Pacific wheel race, I only had these three bottles, and I also had a water bladder, which I threw away out of the desert. But um, for the second half of the of the loop, I put on a bottle cage on the 
down tube it's held on by two hose hose mounts hose pipe clamps and then an aluminium uh, bottle cage also um, just for a little bit more security I had a uh, power cord or just any tie around here just to stop this bouncing around too much but it wasn't really an issue SRAM Omnium cranks um, just great cranks aren't they everyone loves them in the fixie the fixie world and then a SRAM bottom bracket which I bought a new one for the first part of the race and then a new one for the second part of the loop in cans that's all good um, no issues there chain ring is a 48 it's got Australian dust all over it 48 um, it's in 332 so all, so all the cogs are used and this chain is actually a 332 chain as well so not 1 8th, I thought I'd go for 332 because a couple of reasons, 332 it's lighter apparently it makes less noise and also if I have a 332 and a 332 uh, width chain ring and cog it means I can use a road chain if all hell breaks loose and for whatever reason I'm, I'm finding myself having to do, use a road chain or you know it means I'm it means I'm not limited in Australia which is very limited for bike shops it means that I could have used any chain and not had to worry about I need a 1 8 chain and why BMX chain and why track chain so yeah that was part of my thinking there it, went, it worked out perfectly I didn't have any issues pedals I went for XTR pedals um, I should have left this bike inside instead of getting all rusty. <laughs> I haven't been riding much recently. If anyone following me on Strava, I haven't ridden for three weeks until this time last week. I've started doing deliveries again. But yeah, headset, Alpina headset that came with the frame. Chinese eBay carbon seat post. Worked out kind of fine. I had some slippage, the seat slipping forwards or, or backwards, can't remember, occasionally during the race. And I think that was probably due to sweat and chamois cream and all that just getting in here and lubing it all up Cell Italia SLR saddle pretty minimal for like the um the miles the K's but yeah this one's a, actually a vegan a vegan fake leather Lorica one so I'm still vegan guys with the right bib shorts and chamois cream and position which I've never had a bike fit so I guess it worked out well it wasn't too bad rear light there's a Nog, fuck, I think a Nog 4 eyes. there's so many of them, they're all pretty much the same thing. It's got a whole bunch of settings, and it has a really, uh, really long battery life, but I went with this one, like, literally most of the time. Unless it was foggy, or I was going through a city, I'd just have it on that, because it's like, you're, you're driving through the middle of the desert, you're going to see, you're going to see this no matter what, especially with all these, um, all these high-vis strips I put on. Probably talk about these pink... 3M, I think they're 3M, I don't know what the brand name is, but pink reflective uh, tape. I had it on my cranks and my chain stays and my forks for the Indian Pacific Wheel Race and then for the second half of the loop I actually added more, more up here and I added these chain stay ones. Um, yeah, you might as well, you might as well be, uh, be shining out there. Cogs are just the cheapest 332 cogs I could find. I had um, four cogs at the beginning. Any questions, guys? Any questions? Just leave them in the, in the comments because there's so much to talk about about this this race and this ride. I'm kind of whizzing through it here because I need to. I want to. I want to. I've been doing work on my road bike and I really want to set this up to do um, deliveries on. So I'm like, I'm like, I've just got to say everything that's on it and then I can dismantle it or whatever. I'm gonna go through all the gear I took with me in another video by the way so sorry if you've been waiting for that yeah this is a lock this is a little um, hip hip lock hip lock lock it's like a zip tie with a little piece of metal in it it's pretty handy and it came pretty handy because I was using this um, bag the saddle bag made by uh, Thomas my, my mate Thomas he kind of let me uh, trial run it and use it um, got a little bit floppy so luckily I was like you know what? I can just use lock through the through the saddle rails and Keep it, keep, keep it a bit more stiff, plus there's a little bit more visibility from behind, look. See this stupid thing wiggling around, not very aero though. Had this bag, so I've left out so long it started to go weird. By um, John Mack, Mack Workshop, there you go mate. Some promo in. Uh, yeah, I've used this for a few bike tours now and uh, really, really good stuff. 
fill my like essential things in there. Oh Jesus. Ugh, arm sleeves. They've been sitting there for months. <laughs> One of John's things. Look, there you go. Mac workshop. Um, Jesus, that's been in there for like a month as well. Look at that. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah, look. Spare piece of chain. Crystal. Bit of pyrite crystal because you, ne you never know when you're going to need a, a spiritual boost. For the front, I used a out kit. I think, I can't remember how many liters this is. Um, not that big though. And uh, it did come with like straps and stuff. And like as the race went on and whatever, I was just like, screw it. I can't, I'll just throw away the straps. Too much weight. So I just um, literally just been wrapping the ends and clipping them onto the handlebars directly. Uh, no holster, just resting on the front brake. Never had any issues. Um, the only issues were when this wasn't filled up very much and it wasn't tight, it would like sag a little bit, but you just kind of just rolled up a bit tighter. Oh, and also, hello, uh, big ass mirror. It's a Z Fool. I did Indian Pacific wheel race with a smaller one that mounted on the end of the bar. And uh, yeah, I just, for the last 7,000 Ks, I wanted to get a bigger mirror and also sticks into the bar end so I was finding going up the hills I'd have this hand right out here and this hand slightly in because the mirror was mounted there so this helped a lot plus it's just bigger see a lot better when there's cars coming up behind you in the desert in the middle of the night <laughs> the brake levers just uh, Shimano Tiagra nothing too fancy this one this one got a little screwed up in a crash I had so it's a little bit a little bit weird. Plus, it rubs on the uh, frame bag a little bit, so it's a little bit of uh, sl not slack, a little bit of uh, rub. The pads are just extra. It's like an extra thick profile pad, but I don't know, they're not too bad now because I haven't, I haven't been on the bike for ages. But these got like so compressed, and there's probably loads of sweat and oil and gunk and tears and piss and blood just inside these. So you know, riding on it like for hours all day. They just never came back up. They were just <laughs> crushed. So I was pretty much riding on the metal. That's what it felt like. But um, you know, what can you expect when you're trying to get thousands and thousands of miles out of, uh, out of your bike? And the chain is just the chain they had. Uh, they could give me, I think at the moment it's a KMC. Looks like one of the BMX, uh, BMX ones. But I went through a load of chains. Usually bought a new chain every like major city. So yeah, and the water bottles are just bottles I found in cans. Uh, trying to get as big a bottle as I can find, 800, 750 mils, something like that. If I missed anything, let me know. I'm gonna go through the stuff I took. Uh, I didn't take that much stuff. Didn't even take a saddlebag when I did the actual Indian pack and then to cans. Um, that was a luxury I put on for the last, the second half of the ride. Um, I just had a little tool bag, tool bag really small tool bag and uh, stuffed my sleeping stuff which was very very minimal <laughs> into into my front bag. That's it. This is my bike. This was the bike and I'm going to now change the wheels and change the handbars and take all the bags off and take the bottle cages off and uh, get to work because I'm a lazy lazy boy. Well I'm not that lazy because I cycle around Australia but you know what I mean. You know what I mean.